Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and our goal of this lecture is to make use of Pascal's Law for a number of illustrated example problems. I'm encouraging you to get involved with this lecture and pause it when asked to do so and solve for the desired quantities. If you're having difficulties, the illustrated example problem is there to guide you to the correct solutions. Let this lecture be a self-assessment of your readiness to proceed to the next topics. Feel free to rewind, review, or revisit any material your self-assessment indicates you need improvement on. This lecture operates under the assumption you can perform circular and annular area calculations and have watched the Pascal's Law Lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech Channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet, or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. You'll recall that Pascal's Law is the principle that governs the actuation strength of a fluid power actuator. Pascal's Law states that when force is applied to a fluid in a closed system, it exerts pressure equally in all directions. Pascal's law is a relationship between three variables, force, working pressure, and functional area. Pascal's law can be represented graphically as a triangle, with force at the apex and pressure and area forming the base. Today we'll put your understanding of this relationship to the test with a couple of illustrated example problems. First, let's examine an auto lift system consisting of a 12-inch diameter single-acting cylinder tasked with lifting a 3,500-pound car. Calculate the working pressure to lift the car. Given maximum pressure is limited to 50 PSI, calculate the maximum load the system is capable of lifting. Finally, let's say your boss says he wants to upgrade the system for one with an increased load handling range featuring a single-acting cylinder with a 9-inch radius. Why or why not is your boss insane? Prove it by calculating the pressure necessary to lift the same 3,500 pound car and the maximum load the new system can lift given maximum pressure is again limited to 50 psi. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. The area of a circle with a diameter of 12 inches is approximately 113.1 square inches. Given Pascal's law states that pressure equals force over area, lifting the 3,500 pound car with a 12 inch diameter cap end necessitates a working pressure of approximately 30.9 psi. Given pressure is limited to 50 psi maximum and Pascal's law states that force equals pressure times area, the maximum load this system is capable of lifting is 5,654.9 pounds. The proposed new system featuring a single acting cylinder with a 9 inch radius does have increased load handling ability because the functional area of a circle with a 9 inch radius is significantly larger than one with a 12 inch diameter. Recall that radius is the distance of a circle's center to the edge, whereas diameter is edge to edge passing through the center. Diameter is therefore 2 times radius. A new single acting cylinder with a 9 inch radius therefore has an 18 inch diameter and a functional surface area of approximately 254.5 square inches. Given Pascal's law states that pressure equals force over area, lifting the same 3,500 pound car with a new system necessitates a working pressure of only 13.8 psi. It makes sense. The same load lifted using a larger surface area necessitates less working pressure. Finally, given pressure is limited to 50 psi max, and Pascal's law states that force equals pressure times area, the maximum load this new system is capable of lifting is approximately 12,723.5 pounds. Your boss may still be insane, but they're spot on about the increased load handling ability of this new system because of the increased functional area. Note the increased surface area has increased the force, but has also directly increased the volume of space the pump must fill to actuate the cylinder. If the pump flow rate remained fixed, this larger cylinder would take longer to fill. This decrease in actuation speed must be taken into account. We'll examine flow rate and actuation speed in later lectures. Let us now consider a hydraulic cylinder used to stamp the phrase, not for human consumption, on the side of widgets at a widget factory. This phrase is now legally mandated by a country whose populace is too stupid to realize coffee is hot, one shouldn't use the top step of a stepladder on an icy dock, and that sharp metal widgets are not meant to be eaten. 
The die weighs 2,000 pounds, and to properly stamp the phrase on the side of the widget necessitates the exertion of 15,000 pounds of force. The cylinder has a cap diameter of three and a quarter inches and a rod diameter of one and seven eighths of an inch. Use these figures in the accompanying diagram to determine the pressure of extension and the pressure of retraction in units of bar. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. The diagram suggests that extending the cylinder accomplishes the act of stamping the phrase on the side of the widget and necessitates the exertion of 15,000 pounds of force. Similarly, the diagram suggests that retracting the cylinder repositions the 2,000 pound die. The cylinder must therefore retract with a minimum of 2,000 pounds of force. The functional area of the full cap end with a diameter of three and a quarter inches is approximately 8.3 square inches. Given a diameter of one and seven eighths of an inch, the rod area is approximately 2.8 square inches. The annular or ring-like rod end functional area is the area of the cap minus the area of the rod, or approximately 5.5 square inches. Pascal's law suggests that extending with 15,000 pounds of force using the full cap end area necessitates a working pressure of approximately 1,808.2 psi. A unit conversion equates this to approximately 124.7 bar. Pascal's law suggests that retracting with only 2,000 pounds of force using the ring-like rod end area necessitates a working pressure of approximately 361.4 psi. A unit conversion equates this to approximately 24.9 bar. Note a reconfiguration of the stamping system from a supported lateral to a hanging vertical orientation is a better use of the 2,000 pound die in gravity. However, this orientation complicates the controlled descent of the heavy die. We'll examine this configuration in later lectures on counterbalance valves and flow control methods. Next, let's examine an assembly line limited to a maximum pressure of 5,000 psi, making use of three cylinders, A, B, and C with the following dimensions. Cylinder A has a cap end diameter of two and a half inches and a rod diameter of one and three eighths of an inch. Cylinder B is identical. It has a two and a half inch cap diameter and a rod diameter of one and three eighths of an inch. The dimensions of cylinder C are as of yet unknown. Load A is a ceramic mold weighing 300 pounds and is pushed into the assembly area by cylinder A. Determine the pressure necessary to extend cylinder A. Cylinder B pulls open a gate valve on a vat of molten aluminum that pours into the ceramic mold. While doing so, the pressure is observed to be 116.8 psi. Determine the retraction force exerted by cylinder B when it pulls open the heavy gate. The molten aluminum in the mold is allowed to cool, and then cylinder C pushes the combined mold and cooled aluminum onto the floor. The ceramic mold shatters into a million sharp pieces and out pops a fully formed Antonov An-225 Maria cargo aircraft. Let's say the combined weight of the mold and the aircraft inside weighs 630,000 pounds. Determine the minimum diameter of cylinder C necessary to accomplish this final task if maximum pressure is again limited to 5,000 psi. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. The cap end functional area of cylinder A is approximately 4.9 square inches. Pascal's law suggests that extending with 300 pounds of force using the full cap end area of cylinder A necessitates a working pressure of approximately 61.1 psi. The functional area of cylinder B while retracting is the annular or ring-like rod end area, which is the area of the cap end minus the area of the rod. The rod end of cylinder B has an area of approximately 3.4 square inches. Given pressure is observed to be 116.8 psi while retracting, Pascal's law suggests that cylinder B is retracting with a force of approximately 400 pounds. Given cylinder C must extend with a force of 630,000 pounds and is limited to a maximum pressure of 5,000 psi, Pascal's law suggests the area of the cap end of cylinder C 
must be at a minimum 126 square inches. This isn't exactly the answer we're looking for, since we were asked to determine the diameter of cylinder C necessary to accomplish this task. If area equals pi over 4 d squared, an algebraic rearrangement of this formula suggests that diameter equals the square root of 4a over pi. Note the square root encompasses the whole fraction. Substituting in the given values, we find the diameter to be approximately 12.7 inches. A cylinder with this exact diameter might not be commercially available, so it would be a recommended practice to select the next largest available size. Finally, let's examine a hydraulically driven trash compactor on a moon-sized battle station armed with a planet-destroying super laser. Let's say the trash compactor needs to squeeze a week's worth of space junk along with three teenagers, their pet monkey, and a space octopus into a manageable block of compressed junk and ooze to be ejected into the nearest star. Let's say the act of doing so necessitates the continuous application of 10,000 pounds of force over a distance of 10 feet. Given the cylinder doing the compacting has a cap end diameter of eight inches and a rod diameter of four inches, calculate the pressure necessary to do so in units of pascals using an appropriate engineering prefix. Additionally, calculate both the energy in units of foot-pounds force and power in units of horsepower and watts required to complete the task in 30 seconds. If you're up for it, see if you can calculate the flow rate in units of gallons per minute to extend this 8-inch diameter cylinder 10 feet in 30 seconds. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. The cap end functional area of a cylinder with a diameter of 8 inches is approximately 50.3 square inches. Pascal's law suggests that extending with 10,000 pounds of force using the full cap end area necessitates a working pressure of approximately 198.9 psi. This equates to roughly 13.7 bar or 1,372 kilopascals, or more appropriately, approximately 1.4 megapascals. I'm not sure what pressure units they used a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but for some reason, engineers back then didn't have the foresight to cover up notoriously vulnerable thermal exhaust ports. Energy is force times distance. A continuous application of 10,000 pounds of force over a distance of 10 feet requires the expenditure of 100,000 foot-pounds force of energy. Power is energy per unit time. Exerting 100,000 foot-pounds force of energy over a span of 30 seconds necessitates approximately 3,333.3 foot-pounds force per second of power. A unit conversion equates this power requirement to approximately 6.1 horsepower, where 6.1 horsepower is 4,521.2 watts, or more appropriately, approximately 4.5 kilowatts. Note to complete this act in the required 30 seconds necessitates the 8 inch diameter cylinder extend 10 feet in the same time span. This implies the pump supplying the system must fill the complete cylindrical volume of the fully extended cap end in the same time period. A full cylinder with a diameter of 8 inches and a travel distance of 10 feet or 120 inches represents a volume of approximately 6,031.9 cubic inches, or a volume of approximately 26.1 gallons. Given flow rate Q is equal to volume per unit time, this suggests the pump must deliver a minimum flow rate of approximately 52.2 gallons per minute. Note the time requirement 30 seconds has been converted to 0.5 minutes. We'll examine flow rates and its influence on actuation speed in later lectures. However, this should have been well within your abilities to conceptualize, given your mastery of the skills as previously presented in the hydraulics math lecture. All right, this about wraps up this representative sample of Pascal's Law example problems. If an honest and objective self-assessment indicates you're tracking, congratulate yourself and get back to work. If an honest and objective self-assessment indicates you're not tracking, by all means, rewind, revisit, and review those topics you're struggling with and hit this lecture again and again with a renewed sense of commitment and dedication. Pascal's Law isn't especially hard. It does, however, necessitate mathematical competency, 
a reasonable degree of organization and visualization skills, and copious amounts of practice and application. It was my intention this lecture to provide you with a chance to put these skills to the test and provide guidance for those struggling to do so. In conclusion, this lecture took a brief look at a representative sample of illustrated example problems featuring Pascal's Law. We calculated area, diameter, pressure, force, energy, and power requirements performed common unit conversions. Additionally, we snuck in a quick flow rate calculation to make life interesting. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates. Thank you.